today we will be proceeding with the algorithm for solvay stressin so before we proceed with the solvay stressin algorithm if you have not watched the videos on the prerequisites that is the quadratic residue and the legendary number and jacobi numbers then it i would request you to watch those videos and then proceed with this video to understand to get a better understanding of solvay stressin algorithm so in this video so let's proceed with step 1 of the solvay stressin algorithm if you are not given a value of a we can choose any random integer a such that 1 is less than equal to a is less than equal to n minus 1 where a is nothing but our integer and n is an odd integer now we'll be doing the primality testing for n so to basically primality testing is done to determine whether n is a prime number or a composite number any any even number except for 2 is is basically a composite number because it is divisible by 2 also so that is why we consider this as only for odd integers and coming to step 2 step 2 we take the value of x as a upon n this is nothing but a legendary symbol that is assuming n is prime so it could be jacobi as well if n is composite so we take the value of x as a upon n now if x is 0 then we return n is composite x is x comes out to be 0 if a is divisible by n and in step 2.2 in the second part of the step 2 what we do is we associate the value of y as we assign the value of y as a raised to the power n minus 1 upon 2 into modulo n okay and going to step 3 step 3 is if x is congruent to y modulo n then n may be prime so you need to note the word that it may be prime it is not necessarily prime but if x is not congruent to y mod n that is if this condition that we wrote before fails to satisfy then we can definitely for sure we can say that else n is composite so indirectly this l this algorithm that we'll be using is used to tell that the number is composite or not if not composite it may be prime it does not guarantee that a number is prime it may be prime okay and as discussed before so we can write the above above in short that in case p is found to be prime it will become a legendary symbol that is a upon p and it will give the value 0 plus 1 minus 1 and it will always be in this range that is 0 if you you get when p divides a and 1 you get if a is a quadratic residue of modulo p minus 1 you get if a is quadratic non residue of modulo p and p here denotes a prime number instead of p you can also have the notation n in some textbooks and coming to so if that n was over there was composite then it would have been a jack instead of a legendary symbol it would have been a jacobi symbol and that's what we have defined over here formally that if a is not congruent to zero modulo p and p is not a prime number that is p is a composite number usually denoted by n in that case we don't denote it by p we denote it by n then such that n can be broken down into products of distinct prime numbers raised to powers if necessary as follows so n can be written as product of prime numbers for example n is equal to suppose n is equal to 15 you take the number 15 15 can be written as 3 into 5 so you can write 15 indirectly as 15 is equal to 3 raised to 1 into 5 raised to 1 so these are your prime numbers and n is equal to p p1 raised to e1 p2 raised to e2 and so on up to p n raised to e k and all this has been discussed before so basically you can break down your jacobi symbol as product of summation of i is equal to 1 to k of your legendary symbols raised to ei 
okay and this has been discussed in detail in the other videos now there are some exceptions to this that is for some numbers even though we may satisfy the condition x is congruent to y modulo n it turns out that the number is not prime that is why we use the word maybe uh, we use this word maybe prime so that means if this condition is satisfied if x is congruent to y modulo n then it may be prime and which are such numbers one example of such number is if you can see it is 91 so for example consider the number 91 if you consider the number 91 and solve using the algorithm then that number will be turning out it will it will sat satisfy the conditions on both sides and according to algorithm you will get it as a prime number but we know that 91 is not a prime number so it turns out that the number is not prime such numbers are known as you eulers or eulers or eulers whatever you say eulers pseudo prime so such numbers are known as eulers pseudo prime numbers okay and coming to there are certain properties of legendary numbers legendary symbols that we need to note and these properties are very important to solve our uh, problems related to solve sessions algorithm so if n is a positive odd integer and m1 is congruent to m2 mod n then m1 by n is congruent to m2 by n we use this not very often but this is also one of the important properties some other important properties that are you come across very often is this one this is very important if n is a positive odd integer then 2 upon n is equal to 1 if n is congruent to plus minus 1 mod 8 okay so basically the trick over here that we are using is if you get the if you get this as the uh, the legendary symbol 2 upon n if you get the legendary symbol in this form you divide n by 8 if you are getting 2 on top if you are getting the value of a as 2 what you do is you divide n by 8 and if you get plus or minus 1 as a remainder then you can directly denote that this fraction is equal to 1 in other case if you are getting 3 so it will be either 1 or plus plus minus 1 or plus minus 3 that you will be getting on dividing n by 8 so if you get plus minus 3 then you can directly denote 2 upon n as minus 1 so this is one trick involved over here for directly computing the value of 2 by n using the properties and another property is if n is a positive odd integer then m1 by m2 upon n will give you m1 by n into m2 by n so it does not mean that you are get you are multiplying n into n you'll get n square so this is a this is one property of legendary symbols that m1 upon n into m2 upon n can be split into m1 by n into m2 by n so in particular if m is equal to 2 raised to k into t and t is odd then m upon n is equal to 2 upon n raised to k into multiplied by t upon n so that was our property basically you need to remember this part this usually comes and coming to the other part suppose m and n are positive odd integers then if m upon n is given to you then what you can do is uh, you can take basically this m should not be 2 if it is 2 then you you, you can apply the previous uh, the property that we discussed before but if it is not 2 it is some other number some other positive odd integer then what you can do is you can take as minus n upon m if m is great is congruent to n is congruent to 3 mod 4 so in this case what you need to do is divide m by 4 and n by 4 and if you get the remainder as 3 in both cases then you can switch this expression m upon n equal to minus n upon m with this so this you can write as this expression minus n upon m so m upon n else if this condition is not satisfying instead of 3 if you are getting any other number 
even minus 3 any other number you get so this will be n upon m and basically there is no change in the sign only the fraction is reversing the legendary symbol it is reversing and this is our solve stations algorithm we will be discussing Problem, the problems that are related to the solve station algorithm in the upcoming video. Thank you.